All right, welcome back to another video. Today I wanna to do a shop tour. I'm moving my shop to a different building and I really wanna document this shop and, and go over what worked and what didn't work about this shop and the tools that I have now versus the tools that, that uh, they replaced and maybe tools that I will replace them with in the future. So um, let's get into it. Let's start with the table saw. You know, this is the heart of the shop for most people. This is a saw stop uh, PCS, three horsepower. It's been pretty good. Uh, I do like this saw. I, I don't think I'll upgrade it. it maybe if anything, I'll, I'll get the, uh, the industrial um, saw stop. I actually had a few table saws before this one. I started off with a uh, job site table saw and uh, I actually caught my finger nearly off on, on that saw and uh, the cost to, to for the medical bills and stuff ended up actually being more than the cost of buying a brand new saw stop right to begin with. So anybody getting started, if you can at all make it happen, um, when you buy a table saw, if you can wait and save up to get a saw stop, I'd recommend it. Some people say you don't need it, but in the end, it's just nice to have um, that peace of mind. And this is this is like the most dangerous tool in the shop for most for most people, so I would definitely recommend getting a saw stop if you can if you can justify it. One thing I would like to do about do, do with this in the future is I want to get the newer the larger kind of uh, sliding table attachment to turn this into you know not a real panel saw but more of a panel saw. I do a lot of cross cutting on the table saw and. Um, I don't really like using a sled. Um, I find they're big, bulky, and when I don't need them, they're in the way. So I'd really like to do that. Right now I use an Inker miter gauge, which is pretty good. It does work out pretty nice. It's got a flip stop, and uh, that's been real nice. But I think that I'd have a lot more benefits of having a little bit more support on this edge, as well as having that capability of a slider um, to cut things with a long fence to get a little bit more precision out of it. I like the placement of the table saw here, but there is a post out of frame that you'll see when we move over to the joiner that um, is in the way often. And a lot of times the router table is also in the way if I'm trying to cut the end of a sheet good off. Um, I do all my breakdowns with this. I do have a track saw, but um, I don't find that I like working on working with a track saw, cutting down sheet goods. I much prefer to do it on the table saw, if at all possible. So I need to, in the future, in the new shop, I definitely want to move this so this side's up against another tool probably, and this side has much more open space, and possibly add a slider. I do have this on a mobile base, and I've, I got this, this mobile base came with my last saw that I had, which was a, uh, a general, table saw and um, I kept it for this. It has a piece of plywood on it and the whole thing moves. So my cabinet here that I built will move around with this. You know, I keep all my commonly used tools and blades and things like that in this cabinet. And it's nice that it moves around with a saw. I don't find that I use, that I move the saw very much. I have about nine-ish feet of in feet, out feet and that's usually plenty. So I don't often need to move the saw, but um, what I do, it is nice that the whole thing moves. And even the, the arm for the dust collector, uh, the, the overarm dust collection will move around with the saw as well. And the outfit tables on wheels, so that, that can move around um, as well. Uh, I built that outfit table. That's worked out really good. Um, it's four feet wide which I find is, is good. I never really seem to have an issue with things falling off the edge or, or anything like that. Um, the Alfie table's been great. I do wish I would have put the, the miter slots in it because every once in a while I run into an issue with the miter gauge, only if it's on a 45. If it's straight, um, I don't find that I actually need the grooves at all, but I turn it to a 45, uh, sometimes I will hit that. And uh, I just never got around to putting the the miter slots in the outfit table. So I will do that probably um, in the new shop. I'll, I'll route those in. I do want to replace that top. It's getting a little ratty. Um, it's been on there for a couple years now. So it's probably due to be replaced. Um, 
yeah, overall this has been a, a, a pretty good saw. I, if you do run this saw for more than about, say, 15 minutes or so at a time, the bearings get pretty hot, um, like hot to the touch. You, they, they probably get 150 degrees or more um, if you run the saw straight for about 15 minutes. So I don't know if that's this specific saw or if it's all the professional saws. Maybe the industrial has uh, larger bearings or or bearings with better grease or something in them. But um, that's really the only issue I've had with this is the bearings get kind of hot and it hasn't really been that much of an issue. Um, I mean, they still work fine. The, the saw still runs true, but uh, it is something that I worry about long-term that um, I'll, I'll probably have to put bearings in this someday uh, when these ones get burned up. Uh, I like that the overarm dust collection, I don't have it hooked up right now. Um, my fitting for that broke and I haven't got a new one, but um, that works pretty good. Uh, I find that a lot of times I end up not using it because uh, it's just another step to bring it over. But when you're doing sheet goods, it's real nice. I never really use it for solid lumber, but for breaking down sheet goods, that is nice to have, especially something like MDF where you get a bunch of that nasty fine dust. Uh, that's great to have. I need a bigger dust collector to keep up with this. Right now I just have a, a dust collector that I kind of move around. Well, well you, you see that later in the video. But um, I definitely need to upgrade my, my dust collection. And then this, will, this should be almost dust free um, with that and with the dust collection going to the saw itself. Moving on, I got the joiner. I got a 16 inch Powermatic joiner. I've had many other joiners. Uh, I started with a six inch uh, Delta. I then bought a eight inch helical Grizzly uh, that I found was just, didn't have much power. You had to take real small passes. And uh, so I got rid of that. I super sized, got this one. I wanted to buy one joiner, be done with it. Uh, this thing's been great. It's got a helical head, kind of a different helical head than uh, uh, what they're used to. The, the blades are about an inch long compared to the smaller four-sided blades. These have two-sided blades. Uh, this has been great. The, it can be kind of hard to feed a board through if you're taking off an eighth inch at a time or so. It can be pretty difficult to push a board through. So I'd maybe like to add a power feeder, uh, but I've struggled with how am I going to do that where I'm still feeding a board through where I got the pressure right and I'm not ending up with a warped board coming out. Uh, this, has been, this position's been real nice. I got... Eight feet, eight, just over eight feet of in feet, out feet here. I find that that works for most things. I don't often have to join a board longer than that. Um, I don't have this on a mobile base. I don't find that I need to move it. Uh, this is a three phase, but I put a VFD on it to run it off single phase. Um, I don't have three phase here. I don't have three phase in my new shop either. So uh, overall, this machine is going to. Go to the new shop. I don't plan. I have no plans to replace this at any time in the near future. Uh, it's been excellent. Um, I did have a little bit of vibrations with it. I did put new belts on. That seems to be uh, resolved with the new belts. Other than that, not too much more to say about that. This has been great. Um, I got it set up with the router table here, which does become an issue a little bit when I'm running through. Um, I hit the back of the post that comes out the, uh, the fence, if I got the fence all the way back, uh, every once in a while I will run into that with a board. So that could be improved upon. I might put this on the other side of the table saw at the new shop. So then I have plenty of the same amount of in feed, out feed. I don't need to get behind this. I don't need to get on the other side of the table saw. So that space in the middle will just be kind of be dead space. So maybe I can put like a, like a rolling tool cart or something there that I can roll in and out. Um, yeah, so that, that's that been good. This has all been pretty good. Um, I got my toolbox over here. This is mostly for like mechanics tools and stuff. I used to do a bunch of um, engine work and things along those lines. So I accumulate a lot of tools doing that. I find that it's real nice to have this for, you know, nuts and bolts or for, if you got to do nuts and bolts or 
just other things, not really woodworking related as well. I find that nice, but I do, I would like to in the future have its own, have my own separate spot for like mechanics type work. Um, so this will probably not be in the new shop. I'll probably find a different spot for this, uh, build a separate building or something and have a separate auto mechanics type area and you know with a welding setup and stuff too as well so then i don't have to have this in the wood shop it gets real dusty even get dust in the drawers too um which could be definitely be better uh other than that not too much more to say about that okay moving on we got the shaper uh i got a powermatic ts29 shaper this is not my first shaper i had a couple others before this i started with the grizzly it was all right uh, I found the table was kind of too small for a lot of the work I did. And uh, the spindle size was three quarters and one inch. I didn't have an inch and a quarter spindle. And a lot of tooling that I wanted to buy was mostly available an inch and a quarter. I didn't really want to use bushings and whatnot. So I was looking for a larger shaper. I wasn't specifically looking for this one, but I happened to go into my local woodworking shop and uh, somebody had traded this one in. And it was almost brand new. Um, so I sprung and I bought this. Uh, it was reasonably expensive, but I do find it's really nice. It's got a sliding table on it. So this can slide. I find that that's real nice for coping the ends of things. You don't have to have a coping sled or anything like that. Um, I put a big power feeder on it. Uh, that works out real nice. I do wish I probably would have gone with something with smaller rollers or a belt or something because I did run a lot of small parts and I find that occasionally the four wheels are just too far apart and I get some movement of my stock going through there. So that could probably be approved upon. I did get a price for a belt for that. Uh, I might do that when the, when the wheels that I got on there wear out, but for now that'll kind of stay as is. Uh, I don't really like the position of this. I don't have a ton of infeed and outfeed. I originally put this on, the, on a mobile base, but it's just too heavy to move around. I, I got it on a mobile base that's rated for 1,800 pounds, I believe. This machine, I think, weighs around 1,500 pounds, but it's just too hard to move. I don't find that I move it out frequently because it's just such a hassle. So it just stays here, but I run run into issues frequently with infeed and outfeed space if I'm trying to run like wainscoting or flooring or something like that where I need more space. It's it's pretty good here for cabinet doors so that's tend to be what I use it for the most and I tend to find other ways to do uh, my other projects. Every once in a while I'll move it out if I really find a need to. Also my wife kind of got this area taken over. She does glass work so she's got a couple kilns here and this kind of setup. Going forward, she's going to have her own separate space um, in a new building where she can do her glass work. So I'm not getting all her stuff dusty and uh, I don't have to worry about stepping around her stuff. She can have her space. I'll have my space. And that'll just work out a lot better, I think, in the long run. Um, the dust collection has been really good on this. Uh, my dust collector is horribly undersized for what I do, but the dust collection on this has actually been really good. Um, I built a fence clamp system for this. That's been worked out pretty good. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this machine is the the spindle lock is under the machine. It's on the back side. It's really kind of hard to get at. Otherwise, this has been a good machine. This is also three phase. I also put a VFD on this to run this, and I've had no issues with that. I hooked up all the original controls, so the speed and everything, all that still works as uh, as it did. Uh, before I got a lot of tooling for this. I mostly have freeborn tooling. I find I really like freeborn tooling. Um, it's, it seems really nice quality. Uh, it's really repeatable. They got a lot of profiles available. It's kind of expensive, but you don't really only need to buy the cutters once and then you get them resharpened as you need to. So this has been good. Uh, my tooling has been good. I got my tooling on a cart over here. I kind of out of the frame. Um, we'll go over there next and I'll kind of show you some of my tooling that I have for the shaper. Okay, so this is my tool cart that I go along, that goes along with the shaper. Um, this definitely needs improvement. I end up just stacking stuff on top of here. It ends up just being a mess. 
it's kind of not in a real good spot. I got my sheet good storage here. It's right in the way when I'm trying to move things in and out of the door. So I definitely need to find a better spot for this going forward, but I keep all my tooling is in here or on top of here. Um, but you can see it just piles up like a mess and I don't really like this setup. I might build like a cabinet or something to keep the shaper cutters in and hang that like on the wall behind the shaper. That might be an option, but this definitely needs work at the new shop. So now we're on to my sheet goods storage area and this workbench that's always a mess. Uh, this area has never been very good for me. I got two carts here, one that I built, one that I bought that I store uh, my sheet goods on. I find that every time I need a sheet, it's kind of a hassle. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna improve this yet, but I definitely need a better system than this. I find this takes up a ton of space. You know, this is probably three foot wide and this is probably another maybe four feet wide. So this takes up seven by eight feet uh, of floor space that I could use for something else. So I might do some kind of vertical storage or something for sheet goods in the new shop. I also keep a stack of lumber here on the floor. And that's also hard to get things in out of because I've always got my finishes and stuff kind of collect in this area. And when I need to get boards out, I usually got stuff on this and that's just been not, not the best for me. So in the new shop, I got to figure out a better way to do my lumber storage. I do want to do vertical lumber storage in the new shop. I think that'll be a lot more handy for me. So I don't have to dig around so many boards to get what I'm looking for. In the back, I got a bolt bin and some kind of more automotive stuff that again will be moved to a more automotive area along with the toolbox and some other stuff like jacks and battery charger and things along those lines that I just don't want in the wood shop. I really want just a dedicated wood shop. This bench is always a mess. I'll clean it off every once in a while, but no matter what, it just collects more and more stuff. I haven't found a good solution for that. So I don't even know if I'll have a, this bench in the new shop. I'll probably put this more in my mechanic area. Uh, it's a steel workbench, so it'll be good for that. All these wrenches and clamps, all that stuff, that won't be in the shop anymore going forward. Uh, I don't find that I ever really use these C clamps for woodworking. I just don't find them all that beneficial. It takes a long time to, to turn them if you got to adjust them a long ways. I don't often need the big wrenches in the wood shop either. I almost never have a use for those. Kind of moving more this way. Um, I got my pocket oil machine here. Uh, I'll turn you so we can kind of see this better. All right, so now you can see this area. Here I've got a castle pocket oil machine, floor standing. This thing's been excellent. This is definitely one of my favorite tools in the shop. It's just a dream to use. It works nice. Um, I started with just a regular Craig K5 pocket oil machine, or maybe it was a K4, and that worked, but I just found that it wasn't that nice. I then upgraded to the Craig Foreman, which was okay. It did work. Uh, I just found that Sometimes I didn't have the, the, my free hand to be able to, to operate the, the handle on the Craig as well as holding a big sheet and I never had a, a dedicated spot for it. So I bought this used, I got a pretty good deal on this. I fixed this up and this has just been a dream, this machine. Uh, it cuts pocket holes very nice, it cuts some much more shallow too. So when you're putting things together, they don't want to shift as much as they do with the Craig style machines or even like the Ritter, which is similar to this, um, drills a, a steeper angle than these ones do. So this has been good. They do make smaller machines. If you're in the market for something, they make a little clip on one and then a, a bench top version similar to this. Uh, they're not as automated. This has just got a foot pedal. You put your material in, you press the foot pedal, it does the rest. Uh, so this thing, I think I, when I go in the new shop, I'll build this into like a miter saw station. So I have like in feed, out feed, um, 
because I do find sometimes this table's just not quite big enough. If I'm doing like a bookshelf or something real long, trying to get the end of it sometimes is a bit of a hassle. So I'll, I want to build this probably into a miter saw station or, or something along those lines uh, in the new shop. Behind this, I store my molder. Got a Williams Hussey molder. That's been good. I rarely use it. Um, it does work nice when I need to use it, but I just don't need it that often. Um, I don't know where I'm going to keep that. That in the new shop. Maybe I'll store that under a some kind of work surface or, or something, somewhere where it's easy to get at. Because um, I do find sometimes that I do, I could use it for things that I end up using the router table for, but I got to move this, which isn't on a mobile base, to get that out. And um, it's just a little bit of a hassle. But that machine's been great, a Williams and Hussey. And over here, I got a Harvey bandsaw. This is a 615 with a tin coated top. I bought the tin coated top because I was doing a lot of turning and I was worried about the top rusting because I did have some issues with that on, an old, on, the, on a delta saw that I had before this one. Um, I haven't had any issues with rust on the table, so that's been good, but I've also kind of haven't, been, haven't had much time to do turning either, so I haven't been cutting a ton of green wood on this. But this saw has been pretty good. I got this on a mobile base. I usually pull it out when I need to use it. Otherwise, it sits right here when it's not being used. I think in my in the new shop, I'll just keep this a similar setup where I pull it out to use it. I don't need a bandsaw all the time, and this moves around real easy on the base. And dust collection would be easy to hook up where I could just hook it up to a, a flex hose or something, pull it out from the wall, and use it. So that's been real nice. I do kind of want to get another one for a smaller blade. I keep a carbide resaw blade on this one. So I do find sometimes that I want to use a smaller blade and I often don't take the time to switch it over. I just cut it with this and it just takes a lot longer and I don't get as nice of a cut. So I would kind of like to get another one of these, maybe the same model, but without the tin coated top because it is a little bit expensive to get the, the coated top. So I, I, I might upgrade to having another one of these in the future. I did have a couple bandsaws before this. I had a tabletop that just wasn't that nice. And then I, I ended up getting a, a 20 inch Delta. And that was a decent saw, but it didn't have a lot of the modern features like a break and it, the, the guides were not the best and didn't have a fence. And by the time I put all that, was gonna put all that stuff onto it, it was just more cost effective for me to just buy one like this that had the better resaw capacity. Because even though it was a 20 inch bandsaw, the, the height that you could get your guide off the table was only about nine inches or so. And I found that sometimes it just wasn't enough, especially if you're cutting a bull blank or some, trying to resaw a log or something along those lines. Uh, I just found that, that it wasn't quite enough sometimes. I've never had to use more than this. I think this goes up to like 14, 15 inches. I've never needed all that, so that's been good. The capacity hasn't been an issue for that. Overall, it's a good saw. Don't have any issues with it. I keep my box as a scrap here. That's not ideal. Um, I find them them often tripped on them. It is nice that it's close to the table saw, so I cut off, I, I take a long board, pieces like this that are, you know, six, eight feet long, and I'll cut it into short sections like this that fit in boxes, and I'll give it to somebody that burns wood. So I'd like it that it's close to the table saw, but I don't like that it's right here. So I think in the future, I'll make some kind of rolling cart that I can roll out of the way, kind of bring it over here, fill it up, and then roll it back out of the way. And when somebody needs the scrap wood, I'll just, uh, they can come and they can empty it. And uh, that should work out much better than these cardboard boxes. Behind here, a lot, there is some woodworking stuff on this pegboard. I find I don't really like the pegboard. I do like that it's open and it's easy to grab, but most of the stuff doesn't get used all that much. I do use the drawer front clamps pretty often and the squeeze clamps pretty often, uh, as well as the edge banding. But these other Craig jigs and stuff, I just find I don't really use anyway. I, I, when I started off, I was using these to mount drawer slides and I ended up just figuring out the spacers was way easier, way better. 
and was more consistent. So I don't use those, and since I don't use the Craig pocket holes anymore, I don't really use them Craig clamps anymore either. So and I don't find I use them the wood clamps much either. They're they're nice to hold things every once in a while, but other than that, I don't find that I really have a huge use for those. So going forward, I might put these this stuff that I use in a cabinet or something. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have any pegboard in the new shop. I don't find that it's all that handy. Maybe I'll do some kind of French cleat or something along those lines. Um, other than that, all right, so here we're just down from where the bandsaw and pocket hole machine is, just down on the wall here. I got my edge sander. This is the first edge sander I bought. It was a similar deal where I was looking for one. I was gonna buy a new Grizzly or Jet and I happened to come across this one used. So I scooped this up. This thing's been awesome. This is also one of my favorite tools in the shop. It just works. It's got an oscillating belt on it. Uh, the table comes up and down. This thing's been great. The placement could be better. I can't really use the end over there um, to sand inside curves and stuff because I got it's too close to the shelf. So I think in the new shop, I'll put this end up against something rather than the other end. And I thought that should work out a lot better. But um, this machine definitely be going to the new shop. I got no plans to upgrade this. Um, this has just been a great machine. Behind here, I got a, a wall with my finishes on it. I do have a flammable storage cabinet, but I never actually put anything in it. I, I got it at an auction, I think, and I never put any of my, my chemicals and stuff in it, my finishes. So in the new shop, I want to build a dedicated finish room. That's something I'm really lacking here. And have all that stuff in a flammable storage cabinet. Uh, I think that'll just be a better, cleaner solution than having it out here in the open. I have a big metal welding table back here that I don't use at all. Um, it just collects junk, basically. So I definitely won't be moving that to the new shop. I'll, I'll put that somewhere else. I do want to keep it because it is a really nice table. It's got an inch and three quarter inch thick top on it. So it's a really nice, solid, heavy table uh, that is great for welding. I just don't find I do a lot of welding anymore. I would like to get back into it a little bit, maybe build some metal bases or something like that. But um, right now, I don't, I don't really use it. It doesn't need to be in the new shop. Uh, it just, it's just a collector of things. I got my dust collector here. This has been pretty good overall. Um, I put this thing through a, 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 quite a big suffer here. I got a, a jet unit and a grizzly pleated filter on it. I bought this at a rummage sale. Some guy had concocted this contraption and I've used this thing a ton. I've probably filled up hundreds of bags of sawdust with this and it's never really had too much of an issue. I did have an issue with a switch going bad on me, but uh, that's to be expected when you're turning something on and off all the time. I don't like that I have to move this around to every tool, but I knew that this shop wasn't going to be in here forever, so I didn't want to take the time to set up all my dust collection and then have to move it again. Um, so I have had this in here for probably a few years now as a temporary solution, and uh, it's just worked good enough that um, I haven't replaced it yet. So. I would like to get a big cyclone and put in a full ducted system in the new shop. But for now, this has been pretty good, uh, aside from having to roll it around. And the bags, changing the bags can be a bit of a hassle sometimes. But you get pretty good at it after a time or two. Now we are on to the planer. This is probably the most expensive tool in my shop. I bought this new. Um, this is the only tool that I borrowed money to buy. It has been pretty good. I've had, I have had a couple issues with it. This is an Oliver 25 inch, 10 horsepower single phase. It's the only company that I could find that sells a large single phase planter. There's a couple that sell 22 inch, but this was the only 25 that I could find uh, new, and especially with a helical head. I wanted something with a helical head. I've had several planters before this. I started with a DeWalt lunchbox planter. That was okay, but, um, I just didn't find that it, it took me way too long to plane things. I'm trying to do this to make some money and uh, I just, it, was, it took way too long to plane things. I upgraded from the DeWalt to a jet planer molder, 
Uh, that was a 13 inch floor standing machine. That wasn't too much better than the DeWalt. It uh, didn't plane thin stock very nice like the DeWalt did. That was one thing the DeWalt was good at was real thin stock. It, it planed that really nice. But the, the Jet was just not a good machine. It, uh, I had some kickback with it. It's the only planter I've ever had kickback with. So I, I quickly sold that. That didn't last very long. And I bought a brand new Shopbox 20 inch planter. That was the helical head. And that machine was pretty good. I didn't have too many issues with it. Um, there are a few things that I didn't like about it is I could never get rid of the snipe. I always had snipe. It was real small, but I could never seem to actually get rid of the snipe completely. So that was an issue for me. The capacity was a bit of an issue for me. I found that I often needed more than what I could take with that for doing like tabletops or if I wanted to do a countertop or something, I obviously couldn't put that through a 20 inch planter. So I bought this. This, is, this has a segmented infeed roller, which has been awesome because you can put several pieces in. They could be different lengths. That works out really good. Um, it feeds stock pretty nice. I've had some issues with the pressure bar, adjusting that to be just right. Um, but that's really the only issue I've ever had with this planer. Other than that, it's been really good. Um, this is a helical planer. Uh, it has adjustable bed rollers with just adjusting this up and down, which, was, which is something really nice that the Shopbox did not have. The only thing that the Shopbox did have that this one doesn't is the Shopbox had cast iron extensions that came out, which was real nice if you're trying to get a board on here. You have a little bit more space to get it in, and then when you're coming back out, that's something that I did like better about the Shopbox that I like with this one. My dust collector doesn't really keep up with this the best, so I, this does get filled with chips pretty often. I get chips kind of filling up around the base. Um, that could definitely be improved on. Uh, other than that, this machine's been pretty good. Uh, I kept it on the pallet because I knew I was going to be moving it, but now it's been over a year, it's still on the pallet, so my shop move has been a long time in the process. Uh, so I'll definitely take it off the pallet because this is pretty high right now. You know, once I take it off the pallet, that'll probably get me down another uh, maybe seven, eight inches, which would be nicer. I don't like it being right next to the table saw and right next to this post. I don't have much room here. I don't have, I don't have any room here. So getting in and in between to go back around to catch things and then come back around, I'm only always working in here by myself. And I just find that I don't like that I'm stepping over this hose. So I need one side of this with a lot more space going forward. Probably this side, since the dust collection kind of comes off that side, I'll probably have like a kind of a walkway here where I can come around to get boards back and forth. That should work out a lot better than uh, like it is right now. Another thing I don't like about this setup is I only have one outlet here. So I either have my lathe plugged in, the planer plugged in, or the table saw plugged in. So if I'm moving between the table saw and the planer, I have to unplug it and then plug this in. I don't like that. So I'll definitely have dedicated circuits in the new shop for all my tools, not just these two, because I do find that plugging things in is kind of an issue. It's the same thing with most of my tools, 220 tools. I only have four 220 outlets in here, and it just seems like I only end up using these three, and I often have to switch between tools. So that could definitely use some work too. Now we're on to the lathe. This is a 24 inch Powermatic. I think it's a 2442B. This thing's been great. I haven't had any issues with it at all. This was another similar issue. Actually came from the same guy that had the, the edge sander, traded this in. I didn't even look like it ever been had been used but um, I was looking to buy a lathe. I was looking at the Grizzly. Uh, I ended up getting this as a package deal with the edge sander. Um, so I, 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 I scooped this up. 
I probably want to, I don't know if I would have bought this uh, brand new because they're reasonably expensive, but um, because I got a pretty good deal on it, uh, it worked out. And now that I have it, uh, I want to, I probably want to have liked the Grizzly quite as much as this one. I haven't done a ridiculous amount of turning. I'd really like to get into it more, but I just find that it's not often a project, a customer project. This is usually something that I'm doing uh, for myself and kind of in my free time, which I don't have much of. So I'd like to get into turning more as a hobby. Uh, I, this has the vacuum chuck set up on it. Uh, I got an easy wood tool chuck on here. This chuck has been really nice. It's got interchangeable jaws. Uh, it's got a ring that's really to adjust. This chuck's been good. Uh, I started with the easy wood uh, carbide insert tooling. I didn't really like it that much. It, it, it worked okay, but um, I could never get a real good finish with it. I always had problems with my finish, especially if I was turning something like epoxy. So I started getting into the Thompson uh, turning tools, and those have been great, but I haven't, I've only got a few of them. I started buying those and then I kind of got away from turning a little bit. I'm really hoping to get back into it. I want to start selling, selling, turning stuff so I have more of a, of a reason to turn. I like this here that I got plenty of space. What I don't like is the chips get so built up on the drill press and the planer every time I use this and then it's hard to clean. So in the future I'll probably put this up against a wall so my chips I can kind of just sweep or scoop from underneath here rather than have to try to get it from in between all these tools. Uh, I'll probably just put this up against the wall. I think that'll work out a lot nicer. I keep all my tooling in that toolbox. I don't know if you see it or not, but they got a toolbox over there that I keep all my tooling in for this. I would like to have that closer because I find that it gets too far away and I start stacking tools on here and that ends up being a problem. I get too much stuff built up on here and I, if I drop something, I damage the edge on it. So I would like to get that closer Maybe kind of build some storage around here or have, if I had this up against the wall, I could put a cabinet here or some French cleats or something that I could use to store tooling closer to this. Uh, other than that, not much more to say on this. This thing's been great. I got no, no intentions of upgrading this. This is the first lathe I ever bought. It's a, a, a pretty big lathe for your first lathe, but it just happened to work out when I was looking that this one came up for sale and uh, it was a good deal, nice machine, so I bought it. All right, so this is my wood storage area. I got this somewhat sorted by species. I usually have a little more wood in here, but I've already moved some of it to a different area. I started kind of storing the stuff more on the floor. This has been all right, but I would like to have like dividers or something because I do find sometimes when you're trying to get a board off from the back, you gotta move a lot more boards than you really should have. So I wanna put some kind of divider system to separate things out by sizes and species and stuff in the new shop. But I do like the vertical much better than the horizontal storage that I had before this. And down here, I got a workbench. This is a, a scissor lift workbench. So it goes up and down, it's hydraulic. I got this idea from Mike Farrington. He's got an excellent shop tour. Um, so I picked this up, used. I found a good deal on that on eBay. So I bought that, had that shipped here. That's been really good. It's still got a steel top. In the new shop, I want to put like a granite top on this. I bought a bunch of granite from a cabinet company that was going out of business. So I'm going to put like a granite top on this. It'll be real flat. Uh, nothing will stick to it. Uh, so I'll, that'll be a lot better, a lot more usable. I often don't keep this plugged in either because I don't have an outlet real close by. So I find that I often just don't use it because it's not plugged in and it's not the right height. So I end up using my outfeed table a lot more for putting things together and then I got to move it when I want to cut something. So I want to use this table a lot more in the future. Right now it's just got scraps stacked up on it that I'm, that I'm giving away to, a, to another woodworker that I don't want to take to the new shop. But this bench could use some improvement for sure, but I definitely really like this. I like that it's adjustable. It also rotates, which is nice. So you can set a cabinet on, 
you could put your face frame on or whatever you're doing. You could spin it around. You could put your screws in the back or whatever you need to do to it. Uh, I find that it's really handy to have it spinning. I do wish it had a lock because there is sometimes you don't want it to spin and it ends up spinning on you if you're trying to plane something or you're trying to push on something. Sometimes it would be nice if it didn't spin. So I may try to come up with some kind of lock system for this where you could like put a pin in there and keep it from keep it stationary. So maybe a lock and a granite top or even like a torsion box top top would be nice for this. Just something that's more flat. This is a used table. It's not super, super flat. Uh, it was came out of a welding shop. So it, it had some grinding, some welding done on it. I've pointed out the best I could, but uh, it could definitely still use some improvement. So coming on from the my wood storage, the workbench was right here. I got my face frame table. This thing is great when you need it, but I don't find that I need it like every single day. Uh, cabinets aren't all I do. So, and, and not all my cabinets are face frame cabs either. Every, I, I build frameless cabinets as well. So this does take up a lot of space. I consider selling this when I move, um, but I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I could work on a better system where this is kind of, this could be out of the way where I don't really need it. I, I would like to have it hooked up all the time. I don't have it air plumb to it, so I have to plug a hose in and I find that this is usually in the way. Um, but this is great for assembling face frames. You get them real flat, you can put them up against the corner, you get them nice and square. Put the, you can put them together pretty fast. So this is really nice, I do like it. I think I'm gonna end up keeping it, but um, I, I need to get it plumbed in to permanent air and put it somewhere where or find out some kind of way where it doesn't collect a bunch of garbage in front of it. Because I find that I often get stuff piled up in front of here that um, doesn't have anything to do with this. And then whenever I want to use this, I'm usually stepping over a bunch of stuff, you know, these dollies and buckets and scrap wood, you know, bowl blanks. Like I get all this stuff kind of piled up over here because I don't use this area a bunch. So I want to come up with a solution for that in the future as well, where I don't have that same issue. But other than that, this has been a good machine. Also bought this used. I don't think I probably would have bought this new. Uh, for the price that they are, um, you really got to do a lot of face frames to, to make it worth having this. Uh, I got a vise here. I don't know that I'll keep this in the new shop. I, I got several of these pedestal vices that I've picked up at auctions and, or rummage sales or whatever. And um, I, I do use them occasionally, but um, I don't know that I'd use them enough to keep like a pedestal vise in here. I think I, I'd like to have like just a vise on a, on a workbench that maybe is removable. I've seen several guys that do it with like a uh, receiver hitch. Um, that's a pretty cool system. You take it on and off whenever you need to. So I think I'm gonna do something like that rather than keeping these in here. I had two of them in here. I've already moved the, one of them out. Um, but I think I've got four of these vices total. And uh, I just don't find that I need them that often in here. And these are more set up for when I was doing more metalworking. Now that I'm doing almost, almost strictly woodworking in here, um, this needs to find a new home. I got another door here, another big overhead door. Uh, this is, I used to have a forklift and I would bring it in here because my, op my other door has a real steep ramp that I couldn't get up. So I put this door in so I could get the forklift in and out of here, but um, I don't have the forklift anymore. Um, I didn't really find that I needed it that often. I still have a skid steer, so if I need to move things around, I have that, and that'll make it up my front ramp. So I almost never use this door anymore. Um, it's basically closed all the time, but I do have some storage. I do have some cement slab over there that I store stuff on. And there's also a little room actually behind this wall here. It's about eight by eight, maybe a 10 by 10 room that I keep the air compressor in. And then my air comes through there and uh, I got it plumbed in to a hose reel. So that's nice that the air compressor's in a separate room. I, will, I think I will do that uh, in the new shop as well. Um, so just so it's quiet, I don't have to listen to it. It's not like it's super loud. It's a big oiled compressor, so they're not ridiculously loud like the like the oilless ones that oilless pancake compressors. So I'll, I'll probably keep that feature in the future, having that in a separate room. That's been real nice. 
but I definitely want to improve my structure on uh, what I've got plumbed into air because I really just have this hose reel. I meant to finish plumbing in air and uh, I never got around to it. So I just have this one hose reel that I hooked to everything and it has worked, but it's definitely a hassle sometimes. I got a, a hose running around the floor and I'm tripping on it and stuff. So I definitely want to do improve that in the future. All right, now we're on to the drill press. This is a this is the most recent addition to the shop. Before this, I didn't have a drill press. I once had a, a, a little bench top one that I almost never used. So, and I didn't find that I needed one that often. But I ended up buying this one. Uh, I had a project where I needed to drill some big holes, and I was trying to do it with a with a hand drill, and I just having problems with it. So I ended up buying this one. When I bought it, it was during COVID, and it took forever to get, but I ended up getting it, and I love this thing. This thing's been great. I had one issue with it when I first bought it. The chuck, the taper, the Morse taper on the chuck would not stay in the quill. It would spin in the quill. Well, actually, I did get a different chuck and tape and uh, with a different taper on it, and that did work, and now it's been, it hasn't had any issues. But this is great. It's real quiet. Um, it's nice that it's got the speeds kind of built into it, so you you just pick whatever bit you're using, whatever you're drilling in, and then you don't have to do any guesswork on, you know, what, what speed you want to run or whatever. It also can do things like tapping and whatnot. I haven't used it for any of that, but um, this has been really nice. Uh, it, uh, now that I have a drill press, I don't know that I'd go without one. Um, I do want to build a better table for this. This just has the metal table that came on it. I would like to put something on here, maybe get a woodpecker's one or just build one that has a fence and that's made out of wood and it just provides a little bit more versatility than uh, this metal one. Uh, I'm not a huge, huge fan of this metal one, but other than that, this thing's been great. All right, so now we're right across from the drill press here. I'm um, sorry about the lighting. I got a big window here. I got, I got no real way to cover it, so you have to bear with me on that, but here I keep uh, my Blum hinge drill. This thing works pretty good. Uh, I don't use it that much because it's not set up. So when I want to use it, I got to plug in my, I got to plug this in and I got to plug the air in. And I usually have stuff sitting here. So I don't find that I use it that much. I end up just using uh, a cheap Craig jig that works pretty good really. So I would like to get this set up um, maybe next to the uh, pocket hole machine inside of a miter saw station. I find that I, I would imagine I'd use it a lot more if I had it set up where it was just ready to go and I could just come over here and drill my hinges. Then I think I'd use it a lot more. Um, I bought this on eBay. I got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, it did get damaged in shipping, which was kind of a bummer, but uh, I got most of that fixed now. It does still have a few uh, finicky things with it that more from it being damaged, but I ended up getting compensation for it. So after the compensation, I'm only into this thing for about 150 bucks. So real cheap. I don't think I have any plans to upgrade it. I thought about maybe getting the shelf pin attachment for this, but it's so expensive. I haven't justified the, the cost of it yet, but I may get that sometime in the future, or I may buy something, maybe a similar attachment for the drill press or something, because shelf pin holes are something that I don't really have a uh, good system for. And this, this is a toolbox here that I keep my lathe tools in. Down here I keep chucks and face plates and uh, things like, things for the lathe in there. And then I got my Tormek T8 here to do my sharpening for the, the turning tools as well as like chisels and, and planes and, and things like that. The Tormek has been real good. I also find that I don't use this a lot. Uh, I, I build up stuff for quite a while before I end up filling this thing with water to use. Um, I, I want to get the, the Tormek cart for this. They, got, they make like a stand with drawers that are specifically set up for the um, kits you can buy for this. Uh, the drawers are like the perfect size and then the top spins around. I want to get that for this uh, in the future. I think I'd, I'd use it a lot more if it was just more accessible and the 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 accessories were more accessible because I keep the accessories 
down here. And I usually have to move all this stuff that I got sitting here to get that. I, I keep just miscellaneous stuff down here that piles up in front of this. And then I got to move it all, so I ended up just not moving it, not using it. I got a Powermatic uh, Howl Chisel Morser. That has been pretty decent. I don't find I use it all that much. Um, I want to get into building exterior doors. I bought some tenoning or some coping discs for the uh, shaper. Uh, so if I do that, I'll end up using this a lot more. As of right now, it's not getting a ton of use. I'm doing a lot of cabinetry and I just don't find that I need this for cabinetry. So as of right now, it's not getting a ton of use, but I hope in the future that I'll get into using it a little bit more. You know, it does work nice when I want to use it. Um, I had some issues with the, the, the clamp on it. Uh, it's a, it got a self or a quick adjusting clamp that I had some issues with. I had to take apart and get a couple new parts for it. But um, moving on down good. the line here from the Howl the Morser, I've got a spindle sander. I used to have a jet spindle sander and I, I upgraded to this one um, because this one, instead of the table tilting, the spindle actually tilts. So I thought that that would be really useful. Turns out I, I haven't actually ever really needed it, so um, maybe I didn't really need to upgrade. But this one is a little bit smaller footprint, which is nice. Um, overall, it's been pretty good. This is also on a mold base, as well as the disc sander. They all, I pull them all out when I need to use them. So this has been pretty good. I don't really have any intention to upgrade it. I'll probably keep this in a similar setup in the new shop as well. Um, yeah, that, that, so that's about that for that. Uh, got a Powermatic 20-inch uh, disc sander. I do use this thing quite a bit. This thing is really nice. I don't have it hooked up to dust collection, which is a real problem. Uh, my dust collector hose never really reaches over here unless I bring the dust collector all the way around. Um, so I find I never actually hooked this up, which is a problem because then I get all this dust, air, all this fine dust in the air, and uh, then it gets on everything and you're breathing it in. And it's no good. So I really want to hook this up to dust collection. This is my most used tool on this wall here. Um, this has been real nice. I bought this one used as well. Um, this came uh, uh, from the same place that my uh, lay in and head center came from. Uh, yeah, this has been great. Uh, I definitely buy this again. Um, I got no intention to upgrade this. I did have before this, I had a Grizzly disc uh, spindle sander combo, and um, this is a lot nicer. Uh, I find I like this a lot better than I liked the Grizzly. Um, up here, I got a little bit more wood storage, and up on the very top here, I keep rolls of veneer. Um, I really like veneering. I, I wish I could do a lot more of it. I'd hope to someday get like a flip top veneering table. Um, right now, I just use a, a vacuum bag and uh, a vacuum press from vacuum pressing systems. And uh, that's, that thing's been real nice. It's, uh, it's worked out excellent. I've veneered a lot of stuff with it. Um, I really like to work with like the figured veneer and burls and stuff like that. Um, so I definitely, don't, I definitely like that the veneer is kind of up out of the way and um, it doesn't get damaged real easy because it, it, it's pretty brittle and uh, you don't want to be smashing into it with anything. So I don't, you, I don't need it super, super often. So that is nice that it's up there. I don't really like this wood storage above uh, these tools. So, you know, that'll all go away with uh, my vertical storage. All right, so my clamps here, this has worked out pretty good. I built this uh, clamp rack real quick and dirty. It, uh, doesn't quite hold as much weight. Um, it's really feeling the weight of these clamps. I, you know, I maybe have 20 parallel clamps on here. I almost exclusively use parallel clamps. Uh, I don't have any bar clamps. I used to have a bunch of F-style clamps. I sold them. Uh, I just like these a lot better. I have the Irwins as well as a few Bessies. I, I like the Irwins uh, because they move up and down real nice. Uh, I've just come really accustomed to the Irwin styles. Um, I've always been buying these at Menards. Usually I'll get them when they have the bag sale, when they have the 15% bag sale. Uh, you can get these clamp 15% off, surprisingly. 
But um, they stopped selling these and they started selling the Bessies. So now I've been buying the Bessies. Um, it's a little bit of getting used to, but they're excellent clamps as well. Um, you can still get those 15% off during the Menards bag sale if you're in the Midwest and you got a Menards near you. Uh, that's a real good place to get clamps. Uh, the only, I got these Rockler bandy clamps here. Uh, these are really good for edge banding. Um, I got quite a few of those. I do find that I often need more of these. I don't know, I maybe have in 15, 20 of those or so, but I do find that sometimes you need some more of these. If you're doing real thin edge banding, you need a bunch of them. So um, I would like to get some more of these. I would like to get a metal uh, clamping, clamp rack here uh, for the new shop. Um, and I need a better spot for like squeeze clamps. I, I got quite a few of these. I use these for things that are, you know, you don't need much pressure for if you're just trying to like hold a cabinet box together while you're assembling it or something. Squeeze clamps are faster, they're lighter, um, but I don't really have a good spot for them. I keep my long ones here, I keep my short ones over on the pegboard. And uh, you know, I got some here. They're just kind of mixed all over. They don't really have a spot. So I need a spot for these as well going forward. I just didn't have the room here because uh, I got a post in this here. Uh, this is all stuff for the apartment that I got attached here that um, I never got around to putting in the doors and stuff for the closets. So I got to put those in because when we move, I'm going to rent this building out and you know somebody probably wants those doors on. But um, I meant to put those on and put some kind of storage here and never got around to it. Uh, over here, I got a uh, Jessam router table. This thing's been pretty good. It's got the the, the handle to move it up and down rather than having like, to put a bit in there or getting underneath it or something, which has been great. I really like that. Um, I got just some stock guides on it. I also have just some feather boards for it. I got a woodpecker coping sled. I used to use this to make cabinet doors before I ended up getting a shaper. I put, the, I put a power feeder on it from my first shaper. Um, when I bought the bigger shaper, I bought a bigger power feeder and I, I took the little power feeder and put it on this. And I have found that the power feeder really is nice for the router table. I get a lot more consistent results. If I'm having trouble with something burning or if you just gotta run a lot of things through, I find that the power feeder is just really good for this. So I like the power feeder on this. I like this router table. I got drawers down below here that I keep all my bits in that are right into this. This has wheels on it so I can move it around. I don't find that I ever move it around because I really got nowhere to move it to unless I move other things. Um, I do find that I often need more infeed space. I might have, I don't know, maybe four feet or so of infeed. And then before I mention that I run into the joiner there if I got more than something about four feet long. So I really only run about four foot long pieces through here. Uh, so I want to improve that in, the, that, that in the new shop as well. Have more infeed and outfeed space. Maybe even work this into somehow into the same uh, like station per se as the castle pocket hole machine and the, the hinge drill. Uh, maybe just have a whole bench that's all the same height. Uh, that would be really nice. Um, as long as I could figure out a way to do that if all the heights work out and they, I, I could figure out how the fences work where I'm not running material into uh, another machine where I don't have to move things all the time. So I like to do something like that in the new shop. I got no plans to upgrade this. Uh, the router in this has, has been iffy. I got a Hitachi router in this. It's been okay. The speed control has gone out on it a couple times. So I might upgrade the router for this. I do have a Freud router that um, I may put in this eventually, or maybe get a, a Milwaukee or something for this. But I, I like to get a new router motor for this when this one burns up again. I use these Milwaukee palm routers pretty often. These are real nice, uh, cordless of course, and I'd like to maybe get a few more of these because um, I, I often keep, I'd like to keep, I, got, I keep a round over in this one almost all the time. This one switches around, but I'd like to have maybe a round over, a flush trim, and uh, another one that I switch over. But I'd like to maybe get a couple more of these. So I don't have to do as much switching of bits. But these routers have been real nice. I haven't had any issues with these. Okay, so now we're at the back of the outfit table. And um, 
when I built this, I put these drawers in. I never got around to putting fronts on them. I was going to put drawers in all of these, but um, I never got around to it like many other things. Uh, I would like to put some kind of storage in here because this often just collects things as well as that one. I keep all my drawer slides over there, but they're kind of a mess. Um, so I would like to do something better with this and maybe put some edge banding on this because my melamine top is taking some hits um, and it starts to chip off if you don't got anything uh, to protect the edge. So I would like to protect the edge of this. I'll probably replace this top with a new top and maybe put some edge banding or something on this in the future.